So, uh, we had uh, uh, about 4 lectures already in this uh, micro and smart systems. I had given my first lecture on the glimpses of micro systems and after that you had uh, lectures on smart materials, then some overview or some examples of sensors and one more lecture on examples of uh, actuators. So, this is the fifth one on micro systems some examples. Okay, I am Professor K. N. Bhatt from EC department once again. Last time I touched upon this that is the miniaturized pressure sensors which is useful for the intracranial pressure sensors pressure monitoring. Okay. So, what I pointed out is you need to miniaturize this so that what goes into the skull inside into the brain is uh, the this particular thing which is packaged and it has to be inserted. Several applications I had cited last time. Now, today what we will see what is inside this very quickly and how will the system what is necessary for the system. So, this is actually inside that package what you will have will be a membrane as shown here which in this case in a micro fabricated uh, uh, pressure sensor it will be a silicon membrane. This thickness of this membrane may be 10 microns, 15 microns or 20 depending upon what pressure you are monitoring. Lower the pressure, thinner should be the membrane so that the sensitivity be is better. So, this pressure is experienced by this membrane and that stress actually gets amplified over the edges. We will discuss the details of these pressure sensors in the case study when I talk towards the end of this course lecture number 39 or so. Now, there are 4 resistors located here R 1, R 2, R 3, R 4. They are connected by means of uh, uh, metallization in the form of a Wheatstone bridge. This I am sure all of us are aware even right from uh, first year engineering or even sometimes high school today. This Wheatstone is bridge is balanced by choosing R 1, R 2, R 3, R 4 equal to R and when there is no stress on this membrane, the resistance are all equal and output is 0. Now, when this membrane is subjected to stress by means of pressure from the top, two of the resistors if they are p type they will go up in value and the other two will go down in value by delta r. So, these two will go up and other two uh, the r 1 and r 3 will go up and r 2 and r 4 will go down the principle behind that we will not discuss today. So, the output voltage of this here when such a change is there in r will be delta r by r into input voltage that is V s is the input voltage. So, you can see that how much is delta r by r decides how much is sensitivities, how much is delta r by r depends upon the strain experienced by these resistors and also what is known as the gauge factor of the resistors. Now, the if you take a look at the output versus pressure that is what you will get finally, when you make the device. You are on the y axis you have the output in milli volts and on the x axis you have the pressure that is that the membrane is subjected to. In the case of uh, intracranial pressure monitoring it is the intracranial pressure uh, experience inside the brain or on the brain. For a 10 micron membrane of this dimension 500 micron by 875 micrometer square uh, size you will get uh, output voltage of, of uh, several milli volts. Ideally you do not need any electronics. You can as well use this output voltage for example, when it is one atmospheric pressure you will get more than 100 milli volts 59 milli volts per bar, but notice beyond a certain point there, there will be non-linearity. So, this particular pressure sensor can be used only up to about uh, two, two, 2 atmospheres or 2 bar, 1 bar is 1 atmospheric pressure. And other thing is you notice also that when the pressure is 0 there is some output voltage that is called offset voltage. This is present in all the pressure sensors. So, in, all, in any pressure sensor you require to correct this and for that correction you need electronics. Otherwise, you know do not need an no do not need an electronic for the uh, uh, piezo resistive pressure sensor. Okay. 
So, you can actually use electronics along with that to correct that and also the sensitivity which is defined as delta v naught divided by delta p slope of this particular curve that is the sensitivity that will also become a function of temperature. So, you need to compensate for the temperature changes brought in the output voltage you need to compensate for this offset voltage. So, for that what you do is you use this bridge the pressure sensor along with a chip you can use for example, maxim max 1452 is a very popular chip that is used along with this you can have it mounted along inside the package you can have this pressure sensor as well as this uh, chip that is put together in the package and that is the micro system. Alternately you can have the entire circuitry in decided along with this particular resistor on the silicon itself that is fully integrated. We will discuss some of these things much later. Now, the leaving this topic of pressure sensor and the system related that we will just see that this is the silicon we will take a look at this uh, silicon cantilever beams for some DNA detection. Here you have got an array of cantilevers anchored here and this will get deflected whenever a molecule or a DNA strand comes and rests on that. So, here the trick is to uh, dip this in a solution containing different fragments of DNA. Then complementary strands of DNA will naturally bind to specific cantilevers creating stress that will deflect. You can identify whether this DNA is damaged or what is the DNA type etcetera you can identify by seeing the deflection there. This is just to give a bird eye view of what is happening here. This is something which people have realized I think I pointed out about this the last time this membrane this particular beam can be made as small as possible even in nano scale. So, that even a molecule or smallest uh, particles can be detected. The next one that uh, I am just touching upon is the miniaturized accelerometer. A quick look at the you will have you would have discussed it already, but you know that this is a system accelerometer system is a combination of a spring and a mass and the mass is attached to the spring, spring is anchored to the body somewhere. So, if the mass experiences a force it will get elongated it will it will be going down in that direction if you push the force in the direction in that direction the mass will get pulled in this direction till the force exerted by this acceleration that is mass into acceleration is the force is balanced by the spring with a force equal to k into x. So, in equilibrium conditions k into x x is the displacement k into x will be the force mass into acceleration. In dynamic conditions you have to have, will have a second order differential equation, okay. but steady state conditions you will have k x is equal to m into a. So, x is related to x by a which is actually the sensitivity displacement divided by acceleration will be related to mass and the k, k is the spring constant which depends upon the dimensions of the spring. How it is realized in the case of micro machine devices we will see uh, in the next slide. Okay. Now, <coughs> so taking a look at this here we see a, a diagram like this which shows the damping. After all if this mass is moving with respect to another plate with a gap when this mass moves down in that direction there will be air in between the film air film will get squeezed we are talking of gaps of micron between this mass and this plate. So, the film air film will be get squeezed and that will prevent that will have a force which opposes the movement of this that is called damping. Okay. It is like a resistor in a resistor resistance RLC circuit equivalent if you take inductor is equivalent of mass spring constant is equivalent of capacitor and this is equivalent of the uh, resistor. Now, what you need to do is you have to measure the displacement of the mass to going back to the uh, going back to the previous slide 
what you want to measure is how much is the displacement x for a given force. So, if I measure the displacement x knowing this mass and the spring constant, I can find out what is acceleration is, what is force is. So, the entire theme of accelerometer is based on measuring the displacement. There are several ways of doing that. One of the ways of doing this is this is a movable plate, this is a fixed bottom plate. You see the movement of this plate by measuring the change in the capacitance between the two plates, either vertical movement or if this plate is moving laterally, then you can see the area overlapping is changing, capacitance will change. So, you find out the change in the capacitance to determine the uh, displacement and ultimately the force or the acceleration. Now, this is a structure of a micro machined accelerometer. Here, this particular region, the central one with holes is the mass. The hole is provided to adjust the damping between the mass and this bottom plate. So, when it moves, if there are sufficient number of holes, the squeeze film damping can be adjusted by adjusting number of holes. There are other purposes for the technology, maybe well when Professor Vinoy discusses, it will come into picture. So, this is the mass that we have been talking of and these four, one, two, three, four, they, these beams are equivalent of the spring which are holding the mass in mass by means of the spring and the spring is anchored to this body by means of the red color which is the oxide. That means, electrically the spring is isolated from the body, but mechanically that is connected to this oxide. So, you have this mass held by this means of spring attached to the body through this anchor. So, this is the uh, capacitive uh, accelerometer. So, this mass is free to move up and down in the vertical direction because below that there is a micron gap, one micron gap is there below, below that and the only portion where it is holding is this red portion that is the anchor and you can measure the capacitance between the bottom electrode and this top electrode. The way it is made you can just quickly see that this start with this silicon, the entire thing is silicon, top is silicon, red is oxide is silicon. Now, by means of a technique called photolithography, you can pattern this top layer, etch silicon from the re regions where you do not want the silicon like that. You can see that previous slide you had this color everywhere. Now, you have removed the silicon from everywhere else except in these portions. Next, now what is happening is you have this mass and spring everything attached to the body. You dissolve this oxide by putting in dipping in hydrofluoric acid and retaining it in below these anchor portions like that. You can see the red color retained here, all oxide from here is gone, this mass is free to move up and down that is accelerometer. Okay. So, you can put uh, metal contact here to make the capacitance measurement. Okay. Now, this is a, a accelerometer, I will not go into details of that. Now, what I want to show is this accelerometer is based on capacitance sensing. The capacitance is a non-linear sensor because as the deflection takes place on this particular uh, plate, okay, when the deflection takes place for uh, uh, this plate gets deflected, the capacitance increases because the gap between this and bottom increases and this is uh, uh, inversely proportional to distance between the two d. As a result, it is non-linear. So, if I go to higher and higher acceleration, the capacitance versus your uh, uh, acceleration will not be linear. So, what you do is instead of using one plate like that, use a mass which is called a seismic mass, seismic referring to earthquake. So, these mass can be used, this type of accelerometer can be used to, to sense even the very small low frequencies which are. Uh, seen which are experienced in during the earthquake. So, this is the mass which is anchored here, this is a glass, it is different from the previous accelerometer which I showed. So, this is the mass which can move up and down. So, now you can use make a micro system because you need to convert this capacitance to voltage. So, you need to have an oscillator and also you can have further electronics to ensure that 
for example, when this mass moves let us say up due to an acceleration upward acceleration it moves up. This is a metal electrode the capacitance between this and the mass actually will increase because the gap is reduced capacitance is inversely proportional to the gap between the two electrodes. So, that is reduced this capacitance will go up. Now, the capacitance because this has moved up the gap between this and the bottom electrode has gone up therefore, capacitance has gone down. So, what you do is by means in a micro system which I have discussed in detail uh, when we discuss uh, uh, details of uh, signal conditioning I will bring in that here just I will just give a flavor of that. So, when it moves up what you do is do not worry about whatever I have written here because we will bring that later what you do is when this moves up you sense that change in the capacitance and if you apply voltage between these two with the phase difference V m phi n omega t and minus V m phi n omega t you will get a voltage here if the two capacitance are different if they are same the voltage will be 0. So, you sense that voltage that has appeared here condition that convert it into a DC voltage apply that to this middle electrode. So, that if I apply voltage with to this middle electrode with respect to these other two electrodes this voltage between the two will decrease therefore, this when the voltage between the two is decreased what happens is the middle plate will move down because after all the capacitive force or electrostatic force depends upon the voltage between the two electrodes. If I reduce the voltage between the two electrodes because already there is what is the voltage here if I increase this voltage here earlier it was 0 if I increase that difference between the two voltages is reduced therefore, force of attraction is reduced. So, the middle electrode will come down if the middle electrode will come down you know they kept this uh, ultimately what happens is if the feedback mechanism takes place till this uh, middle electrode is pushed back to the neutral position. So, then at that point you would applied certain voltage to this middle electrode you would find out what is the middle the voltage that you applied to the middle electrode how much voltage you applied to the middle electrode is the voltage that you applied to the middle electrode to bring the electrode back to the original position that voltage gives you the force that you must apply back to this middle electrode and this is exactly the force that force this had experienced in upward direction. The force upward direction was the acceleration force the force downward is the applied voltage by feedback circuit. So, these two are balanced. So, you measure the voltage that is applied half C V squared by D okay, that is the force that is applied electrostatically that gives you an idea of the force and the voltage that you have need to apply is the force that you need to apply to bring back into the neutral position. So, now you can see you can use it for uh, from very small signals to large signals okay, without the capacitance changing too much by bringing it back to neutral position. So, no nonlinearity will be absent in this situation. Now, these are variations of that I will have occasion to discuss this later. The previous one was the two electrodes which are uh, on both sides of the mass and the mass was moving only in the particular direction. Okay. Now, this is actually a mass which is anchored in these four portions the rest of the thing is able to move in this direction in the horizontal direction like that and these are these are the fixed electrodes and each electrode marked A is connected together to form one electrode the electrode connected or mark B is connected together for to form another electrode. Okay. So, if the mass moves into the left you can see this electrode A and the mass this flange of this mass come closer together. Looking at this equivalent representation if the mass moves to the left it comes closer to A mass moves to the left it comes closer to A this capacitance increases. Okay. And what happens to the capacitance between this and this B and this if this moves to the left the capacitance between A and M mass increases and the gap between B and M because it increases the capacitance falls. So, 
exactly the same thing that we described for that previous diagram, previous slide happens between the two, two the capacitance increases between the other two capacitance falls. So, use electronics to bring this back to the neutral position and measure the voltage that you apply to bring it back to the neutral position that voltage is measure of the acceleration. I will have occasion to discuss in more detail when I talk about signal conditioning and the actual schematic diagram of the entire system is like this. This is the block diagram of the ADXL 50 accelerometer, uh, accelerometer of analog devices which is used for releasing or deploying the uh, airbag in a car. You can see that this is the mass which moves, these are the fixed electrodes and both are connected together uh, to uh, ensure that you can measure the capacitance between the one electrode and the other and between the two you can do and this is electronics. We will come back to this later. Okay. This is another system digital micro mirror devices which uh, has this is a very classical example of a micro system which has lowest level three levels are there lowest level is the CMOS electronics to control the operation and apply voltage to produce electrostatic force on the mobile elements. This is the mobile mirror the top is the mirror this is the CMOS circuit which is present there you do not see anything here I am just showing the top bottom level. Then you have these all these uh, second level is the hinges etcetera which can tip the uh, the tip the mirror these mirrors the 10 degrees this way that way. So, what happens is this uh, there is a light source okay, which uh, is fit into red green and blue. Now, depending upon the intensity that you require these uh, mirrors are tipped by means of electronics in this bottom circuit they are tipped so that into the screen either you get red or green or blue or a combination of the two to control the intensity. So, this is actually the, uh, the projection system which we usually see and thousands of them are sold these are available uh, commercially in the market. Okay. And this has come in the journals in the as a DMD projection display chip uh, MRS bulletin in 2001 April it has appeared you can just take a look at that. Another system which is very uh, uh, well known is the mirror for optical communication system. You have must have heard of the fiber optics communication where the signal is transmitted through the lights and light is transmitted through the it will be uh, it, it will be through the fiber of fiber through total internal reflection it can be transmitted. Okay. Now, whether you want to use it for telecommunication you need a switch to transfer a signal from one fiber to another fiber. Usually what you will have to do would be convert this optical signal into electrical signal. See first what you have done is at the transmitting end you have the uh, electrical signal converted to optical signal it goes through the fiber and when you want to transfer it from one fiber to another fiber you need to have a switch. One way of doing it is convert this optical signal to electrical convert it to electrical signal back to the optical and transfer it to that. But it is all very difficult situation you may lose some bandwidth you may lose the speed it is almost like traveling by train and when if you see a, a river you have to get down from the train and get into a ferry which is slow go to the other side of the uh, river get into the train like optical to electrical back to electrical to optical. So, that example. So, instead if I have a bridge over this ferry I can go by train from one end to the other end very comfortably. So, what you do is do not use the switch electrical switch use an optical switch what is an optical switch it is a mirror. So, you can see these are 256 mirrors which are used here all these small ones are 0.5 millimeter diameter mirrors <coughs> okay. and the spacing between the mirrors are is about 1 millimeter. 
what you show here is actually the uh, needle to show the size of the mirror. The needle hole is here, size of the mirror is of that. So, this is that show the dimension. So, these uh, several of these mirrors are mounted like this, it can be deflected by electrostatic actuation. So, signal optical signal coming here is bounced from this mirror into a reflector and it is bounced into another mirror which goes into this fiber. So, signal is transferred from this fiber to this fiber through optical switch. You do not lose any bandwidth, you do not have loss of speed, it is straight transfer. Only this particular uh, there is electronics to control this particular mirror. These are made up of usually made, made up of uh, aluminum. It can also be made up of silicon. Okay, this is an optical communication, this is a system oh, you know which was uh, uh, realized by Texas Instruments. Another micro system, I am just giving you some examples of micro system. This is actually a chemical reaction system, where you want to initiate reaction. Normally, when you want to initiate a chemical reaction or make a chemical reaction, you would need large quantities of quantities of chemicals, mix them and then uh, then bring in the reaction. <coughs> now, you can do that in very small quantities by using a micro pump and you can monitor the flow of individual I am showing one, one fluid line where one micro pump pumps the one fluid and the flow is measured by means of a flow sensor and a mixer into which several such lines are coming in and it is mixing. So, you can initiate a chemical reaction using this system. <coughs> you can also synthesize chemicals in small quantities for ok. Now, let us see what are each one of them. I just went in to show you the uh, mixer that is where all the chemicals come. So, this is actually there are different channels which may be on glass. These different cha channel A and channel B are there, there one type of chemical comes in and another chemical comes in through the channel, another channel on the glass. This is a cross section where it flows in and comes in and mixing is done in this chamber. Both inlets are here, this is a mixing chamber, it is not very clear, but what you realize is the two channels on the glass or silicon come and merge here in this chamber and they mix there the reaction is initiated either for analyzing or realizing a uh, or synthesizing the compound. This is a synthesized compound comes in here that is the mixer ok and this can be done in a micro scale. The dimensions can be few microns width, microns depth, very small quantities of fluid, quantities of fluid will flow and the flow will be really laminar flow in this case. Now, the other one there are three components I mentioned, one is the mixer where different channels will come and merge, the other one is flow sensor in each of those channels ok. The flow sensor the, you can just understand this flow sensor from the principle of uh, uh, flow is like a current in electric circuit. If you know, if you have a resistor, if I apply voltage across the resistor, the current through the resistor will be voltage by resistance. So, here in fluidics, the flow rate is equivalent of current and equivalent of voltage is the pressure. See this channel, this is a channel a gap through which the fluid flows and this is where one of the pressure sensors, sensors is located at the inlet and at the outlet you have another pressure sensor. In between you have the channel equivalent of resistor. So, you monitor the pressure P 1 and the pressure P 2 
Okay. P 1 minus P 2 equivalent of voltage difference, pressure difference and the flow rate is known by P 1 minus P 2 divided by the channel resistance. In the case of electrical resistance, it is rho L by A. Rho is the resistivity of the material, L is the length of the resistor, A is the area of cross section. Here, rho will be the viscosity of the fluid in the channel, L is the length of the channel, A is the area of cross section of the channel. There may be a multiplying factor, correction factor will be there, exact equivalent of resistor is there. So, you can measure the pressure difference, you knowing the channel resistance by calibrating, you can estimate the flow rate which are in microliters, otherwise there is no way of measuring that. This is a micro pump. So, you will have several micro pumps flowing, going through the channel and the flow sensor and through the mix through the mixer and the principle of that is a chamber and a membrane which can deflect can be moved up and down and a valve inlet valve and an outlet valve. The valve will open only in this direction inlet this valve will open only in that direction outlet. So, if the membrane moves this, this is the size of the uh, pump on a thumb that is what we are talking of for biomedical applications and space applications. So, the membrane moves up the pressure drops and this is atmospheric pressure this pressure is reduced because volume increases by this amount. So, this valve will open fluid will enter then if the membrane is pushed down <coughs> okay, deflected down then the pressure increases the fluid will flow out. <coughs> now, let us not look at this diagram alone. <coughs> you can take a look at the actual micro pump. This is the micro machined micro pump. There are four one diff different colors 1, 2, 3, 4. In between there is a dark color 1, 2, 3, 4 they are silicon wafers. The entire size of this micro pump is 4 millimeter by 4 millimeter okay, and this entire thickness will be each of them will be 200, 200, 200 microns thick about maximum may be 1 millimeter thickness 4 millimeter by 4 millimeter size very small on the thumb you can have it. This is the membrane which can deflect up and down the center one and if I apply voltage between these two this is thick top one counter electrode. So, it, it is rigid this is just about 25 micron. So, if there is a force of attraction between the two which I can introduce by applying voltage between these two, then this membrane will deflect up, up because it is thin okay. and there is insulating layer between the two that is pyrex or SiO 2. So, there is no electrical contact with it between the two. So, the voltage this is a gap air gap this can deflect. In fact, it is well understood by seeing a look, taking a look at animation. So, this is a chamber and this is the inlet check valve and this outlet valve. This valve cannot move, move down, it cannot move down because there is this is blocking it. This cannot move up because this is blocking it. These are silicon wafers in which there is a flat membrane uh, uh, thin layer of silicon there and this is a hole in that and these two are bonded together by a technique known as wafer bonding. And these portions are created by etching the silicon. Those details I am sure Professor Vinoy will bring in. So, each wafer is taken and micro machine to create this structure. This is machined to create this structure and these are bonded together that is called wafer bonding technique. Now, let us go into the operation of this. Please remember apply voltage between the two this will deflect up. It will increase the volume inside the chamber and the pressure will drop then this will open up. Okay. Now, you can see the animation I will apply voltage this is the valve which can move up or up this can move down the membrane which can get deflected when I apply voltage. I apply the voltage now you can see just watch this particular membrane 
gets deflected up, deflected up because of the applied voltage between this and this there is insulating layer. The volume increase in inside this chamber has increased. When the volume inside has changed increased the pressure has stopped. This is atmospheric pressure outside and this is kept in contact in the channel where there is fluid. So, because of this pressure difference this will open now up. Once it opens up because this is co in contact with the fluid the fluid will enter. You can see the light color there the fluid has entered and once that is entered you remove the voltage the membrane will deflect down because there is no more force of it electrostatic force. Once that force is removed the pressure has dropped increased because the chamber there is fluid now the pressure is more therefore, this is closing and when pressure is more because this can move down that moves down now. So, the fluid goes out from that. So, with one stroke what has happened is this wall this wall has opened let the fluid in that has come out. I will show you the entire thing the one stroke which the where the membrane has moved up allowed the fluid flow moved down allowed the to flow outside into the channel through this like that that I will show it one one single animation. <coughs> you can see now just keep watching the entire one cycle of operation will be over. See that has gone through the whole thing and a volume corresponding to the deflection of this membrane has flown in and flown out. <coughs> okay. Now, this is the uh, this is the micro pump which you have discussed just now and in that particular system that uh, I have shown the flow rate is pumping rate is 70 micro liters per minute for that dimension. How much is the flow rate? Flow rate would depend upon what is the frequency of the voltage that you are applying. You keep on increasing the uh, how much? See, one stroke you will have small quantities of fluid flowing. In one minute, okay, how many cycles are there? It's 50 hertz, 50 cycles. Okay, uh, you have 70 microliters flowing. <coughs> so, what you get is the fluid flow more the frequency more number of times this membrane will move up and down and more will be fluid flow, but you cannot keep on increasing the flow rate here because there is a limitation of these volumes they will not synchronize they move slowly therefore, you will be able to operate it at 50 hertz or 100 hertz depending upon the dimensions of these uh, flanges or these switches. This is used for uh, drug dosage controlled or uh, drug delivery during operation very minute quantities of drug to be delivered during some cancer operation etcetera. And for lubricating like gyro motor bearing in satellites that is the micro pump with volume. You can have micro pump see you do not like this volume is moving up and down in that case you can use voluleless micro pump. Okay. What you see there on the right hand side is the voluleless micro pump. Okay. Here it is a dynamic volume. See for example, the membrane is here this is a chamber you can take a look at it what I am showing here membrane moves up the fluid will flow this and this there is no volume there is no check volume. <coughs> so, fluid will flow from both the volumes the only difference is this is a diffuser the chain the duct size keeps on widening. The fluid flow will be more in this direction compared to fluid flow in this direction. So, both are in contact with the uh, with the, the channel. So, fluid will be flown in both directions, but because this is flowing more here less here there will be net flow into the chamber. <coughs> now, if I bring the membrane down by electrostatic force or by piezoelectric actuation the pressure increases fluid will flow both outward from the chamber. You can see now this is widening in that in that direction. So, fluid will be flowing more in that direction compared to the fluid flow inside. <coughs> so, what happened is 
the there is a net fluid flow from this end to that end when you finish one stroke it go up net flow in that direction and goes down more flow in that direction net flow is from left to right depending upon how much was that volume stroke volume of this membrane. This is the dynamic micro pump or valueless micro pump which is very popular in fact uh, uh, in the in, in the EC department uh, some of us are working on this entire a couple of students are working with us myself and professor Nokan, but on this micro pump if you want to use this micro pump for biomedical applications <coughs> for drug delivery or for some other applications you would like to make it biocompatible if you really want to make it invasive then you want to use that uh, biocompatible so this material can be some polymer type of material okay <coughs> now the other one that I want to mention here is the blood uh, analyzer. This is a very classical example of a of a micro system, <coughs> which is also called as the lab on chip. Okay. The lab on chip here it is not very clear, there are multiple things. One is there is if you break it up into subsections you can see there is a region where you can inject blood sample via this inlet using micro needle and fill up the micro micro dispenser here reservoir the reservoir so how do you fill up this with the a small quantities of blood See the whole idea is you must be able to test the blood, <coughs> complete analysis of the blood. You must be able to do wherever the patient is even in a remote place. You can take a small quantity of blood, put it into use this lab on chip to analyze that blood and see how much sugar is there how much oxygen is there etcetera etcetera uh, concentration of glucose oxygen etcetera you can, should be able to measure that is called lab on chip the entire chip can, is the lab itself whatever you have in a big lab is brought on to this small chip okay so here you can understand this better through this uh, split portion by splitting this into this reservoir where you inject the blood may be a couple of drops. Then air pressure is applied by detonating the air bursting deno detonate, uh, uh, detonators. Okay. You have some air pocket which is put into this just right below, you need an actuator for that. So, that will contain that will be contained in this. So, you do that once that <coughs> uh, the air pressure is applied onto this blood stream the liquid travels down the winding, it travels down the winding channels and enters the multiplexer ray, ray stage, okay. this is a multiplexer stage which divides the sample into four equal volumes and each volume is delivered into a reservoir. So, that entering here flowing through this channel entering into a multiplexer which divides into four equal volumes delivered into four reservoirs over which you have got this biosensors. Okay. And the measurement cycle is initiated and the concentration of oxygen, glucose, etcetera are measured using an ASIC circuit which is connected outside. So, you can see you have got actuator, you have got a biosensor, you have got electronics here and you have got a channel there. This is the lab on chip. It is a very good example of a micro system. <coughs> okay. Now, the last of the things which I want to discuss today is the uh, filter. Okay. When you say filter, it is electrical filter. <laughs> okay. 
the if you see a signal processing circuit like the trans receiver if you take your mobile it is able to transmit signal it is able to receive the signal and they are all at high frequencies modulated uh, signals you must get from that high frequency the signal the voice signal so you need to filter out some of the high frequencies you need to convert that entire uh, signal uh, back into voice so that is present in the your uh, uh, your mobile system okay now when you go to those high frequencies you will have the oscillators filters etc filters will allow certain frequencies to be transmitted for example this shows a filter characteristics if i have different frequencies the output of the filter is zero for almost all the frequencies except around this frequency f not that's the resonance frequency a very good example or very popularly used fil uh, filters are the lc circuits inductor and capacitor now if you want to use a filter one of the characteristics that is required for the filter is that this should be sharp it should selectively pick up the signal it should uh, cut off all other uh, frequencies so when you use inductors and capacitors there are uh, this sharpness goes off as you go to high frequencies because of the uh, resistance of the inductor when i say resistance more uh, technically talking you talk of a term called quality factor of the inductor for capacitor quality factor implies energy stored divided by energy dissipated so it should store energy at that correspond to that frequency and energy should not be dissipated if the inductor becomes smaller and smaller it will act like an antenna you know that uh, the transmitters are short antennas when you go to high frequency medium uh, uh, short waves if you go if you have uh, medium frequency medium wave you have got mast antennas which are very long so shorter antennas anten antennas behave like antennas at high frequencies or to put in other words if a small length of wire it is behave like an inductor if i go to high frequencies the frequencies that we talk of are in the gigahertz range or close to that so very small wire will act like antenna and when induct a wire induct acts like an antenna what does it mean it is losing energy instead of storing energy it is giving out energy in the form of power okay radiating energy so it is no longer able to store that means that quality factor which is ratio of energy stored divided by energy dissipated goes down so the selectivity of the uh, filter goes down that means what i imply is apart from this frequency many other frequencies also will go through that filter so to overcome this problem today one resorts to cantilever beams it's a mechanical structure instead of using inductors and capacitors electrical component use mechanical components this is a mechanical component okay which is a beam supported at these two ends and there is a gap between this beam and the other beam which is going below that there are two beams one is horizontal like this other one is perpendicular to that below that there is a gap of maybe about a micron between the two the property is like that you apply dc bias between the two okay now between this top and bottom there is a gap there is a capacitor so when you apply dc there will be charge stored between the two charge stored is q is equal to c into v capacitance into voltage capacitance depends upon area and the gap between the two now okay if i once i apply keep the voltage constant here there will not be any current flowing through that there will be charging current the current will remain constant now if i vary their capacitance q is equal to c into v 
I keep the DC constant, if you vary their capacitance by moving that membrane, by moving this top one which is movable because of the gap, this is fixed bottom one. With respect to that, I can move it up and down. If I move it, C can change as DC by DT. Q is equal to C into V. If C varies at DC by DT, Q varies as DC by DT into V. So, Q is DQ by DT. So, there will be current flow through this path if that membrane, this beam is moving. How much current flow depend upon the rate at which it is moving and the amount of am amplitude of this movement of this uh, membrane, I am sorry the beam, you can call it membrane if you like, it is a beam whose dimensions are small. Okay, now, what you do is along with the DC, this is the loop through which the current flows. I can put my load here, whatever wherever I want to sense the signal, this is the incoming signal. If I keep on varying the signal, there will be movement of this mass or this beam with respect to bottom electrode. As you vary the frequency, there will be certain movement, but as you keep on increasing the frequency at a particular frequency at which or uh, the fre particular frequency which matches with the mechanical resonance frequency of this beam, the movement will be maximum that is called resonance. So, when the electrical frequency resonates with the mechanical resonance frequency of that structure, the movement of the, ma the beam will be maximum, it will amplitude will be large and at that frequency when it moves d c by d t changes quite large because of the because the movement is very large. Therefore, d c by d t into v d q by d t there will be current flow through that and because at resonance frequency which is governed by the size of this beam that is spring constant and the mass decided by size decides the frequency at that frequency you will get resonance and at resonance you will have current peaking up. So, the principle is that you have DC voltage and move make the membrane move or make the mass move with respect to the frequency that you are sensing and when the applied frequency resonates with the resonance mechanical resonance frequency of this beam the movement is maximum therefore, d c by d t is maximum therefore, this current to this portion is maximum. So, you get corresponding that frequency current flow that can flow through your circuit. So, you will have the you have selected the frequency corresponding to the resonance frequency here okay, that is called the resonator. This is the one which people are working out and this is the actual structure which has been reported in literature that is the beam which is having a gap between the two. The dimensions are some 40 microns, length, width 8 microns, thickness 2 microns, very small, and the gap is about 0.1 micron. The resonance frequency of this particular structure is about 8.5 megahertz. Now, you would like to have certain frequencies which over a bandwidth if you want to pass, that is called band pass filter. This will allow only one frequency. What you do is use two of those structures, connect them mechanically like this one beam, another beam, there is a mechanical connection between the two, they will be moving, trying to move together, each one will be pulling together with the respect other frequency. So, instead of one frequency, you will get a band of frequencies that is called band pass filter. So, use these band pass filters in all your uh, receivers, trans receivers. So, this is not, now do not get frightened, this is actually the receiver, trans receiver in your mobile all this within that is electronics and in addition to electronics all these are the filters ceramic filter then voltage controlled oscillators saw filters these all take lot of space. So, the goal is to change these filters with the small size mechanical resonator. So, that entire thing can be made very entire electronics can be put in a single package it is very small if you open up your uh, mobile, you will see that lot of space is taken up by this uh, circuit because of these mechanical filters. In fact, the saw filter will take lot of volume like this, 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter will be the space taken by that, but the entire thing can be taken care of by one beam like that, which is like that. 
So, what is 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter can go in by few micron size here. So, going back to the previous slide, okay, this entire thing the goal is to and replace the entire thing by means of one such structure like this. Okay. You can have many more of them to represent different frequencies the entire size can be reduced and the quality factor will be excellent provided the whole thing is put inside a vacuum. So, to, in summary I have given you several examples of micro systems only few examples are illustrated in this presentation. I have illustrated pressure sensor along with electronics as one of the systems and acceleration system along with electronics for uh, uh, airbag actuation etcetera. I have also illustrated the RF filter resonator for trans receiver systems, chemical reaction system where you have got a pump, channel and mixer, lab on chip the classical example of a micro system where you can actually use this for testing a patient, testing the blood of a patient far away from the uh, civilized uh, realization even in war front or even in remote village you can take this and make use of it for uh, testing the blood. Uh, the components of the blood in the blood of the patient right there. Thank you very much. I think we will continue on some of these things in subsequent lectures.